Hello and welcome. We're here for a fun tutorial from Beehive Pull Shop. We have Jennifer with him here with us today, <laughs> and she is going to show us how to make a Laura Heine project wrapped on canvas. So, Jennifer, can you show us your fun uh, finish project? Yes. And we will. We'll, we're going to do it I with put that blade in because yes. I tend to. So here's my finished product. This was my Laura Heine Flamingo. Yes. I can't remember its name. I think it's from Teeny Tiny Group. Yes, numbers. it's the Teeny Tiny. Mm -hmm. So um, when I made this, I made it a little bit bigger than the pattern called for so that I could stretch it on canvas because you do need to have a little excess to mm -hmm. wrap around. So that's 19 by 23 is the size to do a teeny tiny to wrap it on canvas. Yes. And it just got quilted mm -hmm. um, here recently with some variegated thread, um, which is really fun. And I have here also recently quilted my pin cushion. And uh, so it's very pretty, but it needs to go on canvas. So Jennifer's gonna show us how we uh, square this up. Okay. And then we're gonna just start stapling it. It's really easy. I've already um, squared up the other three sides. She's we'll do our last sign. I'm using the favorite Quilter ruler. Select. It's my favorite ruler. I'm kind of a quilt, uh, quilt ruler snob. snob. Quilter, yeah, ruler snob. But um, it's my favorite ruler and my favorite rotary cutter, which is also Quilter Select. And I'm learning how to use this one because you can actually use it right or left handed. Yes. Even though yes, we're both right-handed. I'm getting, I'm getting better with the one-handed thing. But you just cut those off. It's really easy. Um, some of the tools that you need. You don't need a lot of tools. You need, of course, your blank canvas, which you can purchase these at any craft store. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's size and 16 by 20. 16 by 20. They have them at the big box store, too. Mm -hmm. um, you also need a staple gun. Now, I don't know if there's a better size of staple that you can get. If you have an electric one, it would work even better, but I did not. I used what I had in the garage. Um, these are, I guess that's the, I don't know if that's the size. 9 16th staples. Yeah. There we go. And then a little, uh, I don't know if it's an upholstery hammer, what it's, the official name is, but. It's very vintage and it works. But it's a small one, so you don't want a lot of force on it. So it's really easy to do. Um, this one's going to go horizontal. So I just turned mine over like this and tried to center it up as best as possible. You've got to make sure you have enough to wrap around the edge to put a staple in. So I kind of did that mm -hmm. to make sure. So if you have to make adjustments, you have you know, room to do it. Don't just start stapling yet. So, so it I kind of- like it's about a quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths Wrapped of an inch over, yeah. Is what you see on the back side. Yeah, so I did do my shorter ends first. Okay. And um, that seemed to work really well when I did it. I don't know if it really matters, but I think I moved it a little bit. Just got to make sure, good. does it have enough to just barely move it? Okay. Oh. That looks good. It okay. Looks good. I, I moved it again, though. I'm... This is the probably the trickiest part. It really is very easy to do. So should you do this with a do. pair? Should someone hold and someone? Well, I actually did it on my own last night. Oh, cool. Gary was off in the other room, so um, I mean, it might be easier with a pair, but yeah, you just gotta make sure and that they just enough to get it over. And so I folded it up. Don't get your fingers in the stapler. Yes, yes, no That's something emergency I would do. rooms. Yeah, and like I said, with an electric stapler, it would be even easier. Oh, and wow. I, so oh, when fun. I did it, they, I did a few before I did that. Oh, so cool. I kind of attached it, and then I went back we'll do to your one first, side. Okay, that makes I sense. I went on and did, um, did one side before I went in. Put this, you mm. can see the staples. See, I was and really curious how this would work. An electric one might put them in a little bit better. Um, and like I said, see, there's a little gap there. You mm -hmm. so that's might have to go in and put extras in, but you're just gonna just keep wrapping it around. And then you have to do this gently. My husband showed me how to do this because he said you'll bend over your staples, but make sure it's solid and you tap it. Don't get your fingers, because that's something I would do again. And it's there okay if you do get them bent. I mean, I probably have a couple on mine. Real easy to do. 
see that see side. that one side's kind of bending a little bit but it should be okay but it's Especially really just enough to it's hold it just on your to wall hold it on to the canvas yeah because that well this works quite nice i would have had no idea so this is how it works. like right here i would go back and put another staple in so it's not gapping as bad i mean it doesn't have to be totally down but when you're done with it this is what it looks like. So on perfect. The back. Yeah, so it looks like so they're see, about like two, two and a half inches. Yeah. Well, and over here I got a little bit more. I had, yeah. Just depends on how many gaps you have. But it's real easy to do. And it really looks professional. And it looks nice hanging on your wall. Well, thank you for showing us, Jennifer. This is great.